To enable audio control, please enter your audio. Hi, everyone. This is Sam here. Can you guys hear me? Sorry for the delay. I was stuck in a uh, traffic. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Turn on. Okay. okay. So, so sharing my screen. Uh, okay, I started the recording. Okay. So we've seen till uh, file cabinet and email templates. So we are just left out with a suite bundler, dashboards, and then um, the other stuff like support and uh, suite answers. Okay, first let's see suite bundler. What is suite bundler? So suite bundler. So this is the thing. Uh, whenever you get onto a project, uh, you are given a requirement, okay, uh, and you implement that requirement and you implement it in sandbox, okay. And you test it in sandbox, even the business user tests in sandbox itself. And when everything is fine, okay, whatever they asked, uh, we have implemented, it's working good in sandbox. Uh, they will give us acceptance to push the requirement to production. So whatever you implemented. So for example, they gave us a requirement and you created custom records, you created some fields, you created uh, some scripts on it, okay. And then... Uh, after creating all those, you got the requirement working as the business user wanted. And then you tested, business tested, everything's fine. So you now you're pushing, uh, now you have to push the changes, like all those, all the things you created for this requirement to production. How do you push that to production? So NetSuite has a standard way. Uh, it's called suit bundle. So whatever you, you created for this requirement, you uh, Take, uh, you create a bundle for everything. You bundle all those things. For example, you created a custom record, you created a field, you created a script. You bundle all those things uh, into a bundle and you save that bundle, you store it and from production, in, you get into production, you install that bundle. That's it. So once the bundle is installed in production, all the bundle components like the field, the script, everything will get installed in production. So it's automatic. So you not you need not create all that you've done in sandbox again in production. Let's see uh, where and how it is done. So it's on the customization. Suit bundle, create bundle. So in sandbox, after your uh, requirement is done, implemented, tested successfully. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, this is what's happening currently. Uh, like 95% of uh, companies that are using NetSuite, they don't use suit bundle because they don't trust. Simply, they don't trust suit bundle. They just do it manually. Even the company I'm working at, they do it manually. So we don't use Suite Bundler. Only 5% of uh, companies that are uh, using NetSuite, they might have small customizations. It's They might be using uh, NetSuite in a very limited way. So they don't have any problems. So they might be using Suite Bundle. But 95% of clients, huge customizations. Uh, you, what, what do you say? Uh, they're very important, huge, and uh, can't take any risks. So that's why they uh, do it manually and you might ask why do they manually what are the risks in uh, using suite bundlers okay it's not 100 percent it doesn't work 100 percent all the time sometimes it may not work and that's not uh, you can't even predict when it will work when it will not work so sometimes uh, in what cases does it doesn't work in update when you're doing update of a field okay a field is already present in production it's all it's there in sandbox and in sandbox you did some update to the field and when you are pushing this change to production, it may not work. And earlier workflows, workflows are not part of uh, suite bundles. Even save searches, I doubt whether save searches and workflows are now included or not. But uh, as far as I've seen a few months ago, it wasn't available for suite bundling. So for these three things like uh, field updates and workflows and save searches, certainly it was only way to the only way to push it was create manual in production. So that's why uh, when it's like every, any company wants to be consistent. Okay, few things you are pushing manually, few things you use your bundle, and even even when you use a bundle, we're not sure it may work or may not work. And when you use a bundle again, someone has to check it in production. Okay, did the bundle really 
install all the components correctly or not exactly as it's present in sandbox or not so that's why due to that uh, mistrust 95% um, of clients they don't use sweet butter but you never know you might be lucky uh, your company uh, might be using sweet bundle and that's why you need to know how to create it so customization sweet bundler first you need to create sweet bundle in sandbox okay uh, you give any name okay testing uh, bundling okay and you need to give a name version you can queue up uh, provide versions like the first time you are doing for this requirement like for example you get requirement right for that requirement okay uh, the requirement name and version might be v v1 okay or 1.0 uh, if that requirement is gone to production it's working okay we need some more change okay again you make a change test it done okay now you're pushing the same thing into production okay then you put version 2.0 because it, it belongs to the same uh, requirement okay name and version that's what you take here and these all are not required uh, i don't think we need to do anything here and you go to next page and on next page also i don't think you need to do anything because by default you can give provide a description if it's a requirement you can pro provide your requirements description over here then by default it's always next to it one world and over here it's not required nothing language english that's the default and then click on next so here's uh, this is the page where you select all your components so you you got requirement you created uh, some custom objects like few things for that requirement what did you create okay if you created fields okay where do you find the fields custom fields okay all the fields are here uh, you want to double check it go to transaction body fields and see what are here uh, it starts with all oh, okay uh, let, let me start with ID. maybe it starts with internal ID. Uh, okay so these all are uh, custom transaction body fields and you go here transaction body fields see you get all those fields these are the fields that we have oh sorry this file cabinet uh, okay transaction body fields okay yeah these are transaction body fields so it's like that and what else if you create a form okay where are forms um, do we have forms here yeah we have forms okay which forms entry forms uh, transaction forms yeah it's over here entry forms uh, entry or entity okay uh, those are the customer vendor and employee those are here you just click on see you have all the forms so if you create a new form that will appear here then you click on that it will become part of the bundle in this third column <coughs> so what all you can add to a bundle your csv imports saved only saved csv imports okay uh, actually it doesn't make sense to <laughs> bundle csv imports it's always better to use csv imports separately in sandbox or separately in production uh, custom fields yes certainly you'll always uh, you can easily you add to a bundle what is this custom list and custom records yeah good transactions see you even have transactions are there any so yeah it's not available there are no transactions for actually nobody bundles a transaction that doesn't make sense to for example any sales order or any invoice any po you, you should not bundle it and push it to production <laughs> doesn't make sense because the ids might get deferred right in sandbox it's, it's always a uh, uh, it's ordering uh, if you create a po it's the internal id will be might be one two three the next pre po will be one two one two four one two five one two six it's like that and in production in sandbox you create a lot of lot of stuff right like uh, you do a lot of testing a lot of uh, test data so that's why you, the internal id might be the huge uh, it might go to a huge number in production there's no test data it's just the real data real uh, actual transaction data that the company is using so that's why the internal ids might clash and also you never know some fields might pres be present in sandbox or may not be present so it's not most of times sandbox and production will not be in sync unless you refresh it okay this is one more thing you need to understand so netsuite uh, provides an option for refresh of sandbox so which means see there are two instances one is production one is sandbox okay production is a live so whatever the business users are using it live uh, creating live transactions all the real actual data which is working going on it's uh, present in production and what then then there is sandbox what is sandbox sandbox is for us developers whenever the users want some new requirement new functionality we build it in sandbox we test it even they test it in sandbox and only then we push it to production see here you are testing it so you have a lot of data right lot of sample data so it's like it's all it's not always same so production has real data and 
uh, sandbox you have a lot of sample data test data stupid data bad data so it's not always same so that's why netsuite provides option called refresh so more every company every company that uses netsuite uh, it's based upon subscription some companies get six uh, refreshes per year some get 12 refreshes per year some might get 20 refreshes per year but certainly no company will be using all those refreshes they might be refreshing two or three times per year based upon their how they uh, how they're using netflix so uh, what happens with the refresh so whenever a company in, a, in your uh, team uh, you guys feel okay you, or even your business it's like a, it's a collective difference uh, collective decision within the company so you all uh, dis discuss and decide okay let's refresh why are you refreshing because you need your sandbox to be exactly as production so that's what happens when you put a request to netsuite support hey we want a refresh of, of our sandbox and the refresh takes like two three hours and those two three hours you can't log into netsuite so when you schedule uh, i mean when you request a refresh uh, netsuite support will let you know okay this is the time we are going to refresh it More, mostly they'll do friday evenings or saturdays or sundays so at that point of time you can send an email to all your netsuite users within your company that hey we're going to refresh uh, Netsuite Sandbox, which is not production, Sandbox. So please don't use Sandbox. But mostly they won't be using Sandbox until they have any requirement and you built it and they're testing. Or else their main duty is working on production. So that doesn't matter, even if they can't log into Sandbox, that will not uh, be a showstopper or that will not uh, haul them from doing their uh, uh, business, critical business transactions. Okay, so this is what happens. Whenever the refresh takes place, the two, three hours, okay fine uh, you can log in those two three hours after that what happens your sandbox will be exact replica of your production so all your you know, see uh, the real transactions will not be in sandbox right so when real transactions are where are they created they can just create in production in sandbox you will have only test data right so when you, when the refresh happens all the actual production transactions data everything will be in your sandbox so from there on again you build your new uh, functionality new requirements it's like that so that's about refresh so whenever you whenever the company refreshes sandbox sandbox becomes production so what are in this production what else then production it will be in sandbox you just need to identify that it by over here uh, like on the url they both will have different url and also sometimes it will say somewhere here like sandbox uh, currently honeycomb they don't have anything here saying sandbox or production because currently we have only one account right to for our training it's just a training account so see they even have spelled it wrong <laughs> it should be training <laughs> and they say trailing wow okay so yeah you will you should you need to or else if you're given access to both sandbox and production i would say uh, come to set preferences as change the theme i mean change the color i do that way so in every uh, wherever i work uh, in every company of mine uh, where I worked on NetSuite, uh, wherever I had access with uh, sandbox and production, I always had two different colors. So sandbox color is different. I mean this uh, address bar, this bar, tabs, and production would be different. So that you can identify using this color theme or somewhere here it will be written sandbox or production or the URL. So based upon that, and with this important rule never mess up in production. You might lose your job, and in some cases even you might be. Uh, legally uh, sued or legally uh, you might get a notice and you might have to face all legal issues so make sure never touch anything in production okay don't mess up even you're testing anything don't don't test in production okay don't do anything any silly things in production always you are a netsuit consultant you may be a netsuit admin or developer you own the sandbox that's it anything you want to do do in sandbox don't touch production at all okay Make sure uh, if you want to be safe in your job, if you don't want to lose your job, okay, never touch production. Just work in sandbox. Do all your customization in sandbox. And and let me tell you, uh, in like huge companies, like very huge large companies, you won't even be having access to production. Okay, they will not have, give you access to production, or they might give you read-only access to production. Okay, what does that read-only access mean? You can't do anything in production. You can just see everything in production. You can't do anything. So that that way, it's better. You won't mess around in production. And in those huge companies, what they do, uh, the team there will be a separate team to do all the deployments in production. So what happens? You as a developer, you might be working on requirement in sandbox. You build it, implement it, test it. 
business test it okay fine now it needs to go to production you won't be doing that move to production you you may not even be creating a bundle okay if you're creating a bundle you create a bundle and that's it you give the bundle name or bundle id and the team they do that installation in production or if you're not using bundles you create a document with all the steps that you created and that needs to be created in production and you give the document to the team to that uh, whoever team is that uh, deployment team and they take care of it and if required they might ask your help or take your help take your uh, support so that's how it works uh, mostly uh, big companies will not allow you to mess around in production it's not like no they won't give you access if they don't give you access you need to uh, put put forward your point saying that hey if you don't give me access and if there is an issue in production okay there is some sales order which is uh, uh, which has been created weirdly like users enter their data and some other data is showing out there so if i i need i need access to see look at that data look at that uh, transaction what is the issue real issue so that's why if any if any uh, client at your uh, project if they don't provide you production access you have to tell them hey if you don't give me access i can't uh, look at the issues in production so since i need to look at the issues i need access and it's better you ask them okay give me only read only access don't give me all with all full access okay uh, full access in that case there are chances you might mess around you might get confused and you might do something in production which you are not supposed to so yeah it's better you ask them for to give you a read only access so that you can if on read only access you can just see what's happening you can just view the transaction you can't do anything from then from from there you can uh, uh, do your uh, deep dive into doing your uh, what do you say uh, like uh, investigation you can do all that and see you can find the root cause of the issues and fix them so that's how that's a better route to follow uh, and if uh, if you're too if you're too unlucky and you get complete full access in production then your thumb rule is never mess around in production never do anything in production okay so let's get back to this uh, suite bundler okay let's see what all you have you can do bundling you can do fields you can do forms uh, you can do lists records and then integrations okay uh, forget about it i let you know about uh, what are integrations later on then online forms uh, plugins uh, reports okay even reports you can do save reports okay can you do save such as wow okay save such as are there finally a uh, few years back it wasn't there so now even save such as you can do but still you never know whether it works perfectly or not even if you are updating a save such then certainly you need to check if it updates or not so most most of the cases with suite bundling create is not a problem when you create something new and you push it using a bundle it's fine it might get created 100% but update most of the time with update um, they have been issues so that's why most of the clients they don't use suit bundling okay sales such as such there let's see workflows did that oh wow they even added workflows good custom workflows see you now they have everything okay they have everything but still some clients are not using it not some most of them are not using it you can understand by that okay they are providing everything for bundling but still you are saying 95% uh, clients are not using suite bundling then certainly it might be people are not trusting on it it may not work 100% right all the time so see you have everything the suite script sub tab sub lists sales such as roles or oh, even have roles okay do you have users let's see if it has users see it doesn't have users okay yeah i don't see Yeah, if you guys, if you guys are practicing creating just a suit bundle, yeah, I know you don't have production, so you can't install it somewhere and see. But you can still create a suit bundle. So go ahead, just practice it. While you're practicing, just search. If you can see, you can add a role. So you click on it. Uh, oh, here you'll get all those. You just click. If see, you clicked, and it comes to the bundle. So currently, this bundle content has this workflow. Okay, that way you add all your workflow. Uh, this is a test type. That's fine, no problem. So you add now uh, in our test uh, bundle, we added this workflow. Uh, we can you can add many things. Okay, you can add multiple things. Mm, let's add something. Okay, let's add this. Anything. Okay, let's add a role. Custom roles. Okay. Okay, that's enough. Or you can add a script. Oh, what is the script? Suite script. Okay. Client. Let's open a client script. Okay, Google. Okay, let's add one. Okay, 
so you so whatever items you created for your uh, requirement you add all those to the bundle click on next now you need to save the bundle so this you can check here so there's even option for set preferences so these are all the content uh, contents of the bundle okay you have you can set preferences hide on existing custom forms or show on existing custom forms you can here yeah, you can select your uh, preferences here uh, lists preserve data replace data merge data okay you have this so you, you can check all those and then when you click on save the bundle gets saved and then the first thing you need to do is modify availability of your new bundle okay once you come here look at this level don't put it private okay always do it public or share okay uh, you can have it public public is best visible by all then it's better you copy to repository so it's then to repository too and then you save it so now what happens when you go to production okay mostly you won't be doing it in production because there's the team uh, doing that or else if you are doing it in production uh, what you do is come to shoot bundle search and install bundles click on it and then uh, always do advanced okay uh, and keywords whatever we did test okay test bundle test bundling okay. and then over location so you uh, where did your bundle get saved you have only three options over here repositories and box production search in each one of those you'll find it in somewhere okay and availability uh, did you do you remember what was the availability you set on it we just did public I guess so public that's it and you search test bundling see testing bundling we just created this second September so when you find that bundle in production just click on it and you will get option to install uh, actually this is the same instance so i don't know. let's see if we can get an option okay Recon does not exist good so that's how you do it so when you need to find out your bundle and click on the bundle and when the bundle opens you can see install button at the uh, top you click on the button and that's it it installs all the components of the bundle in your production so that's how suit bundling works okay so next let's see what is the next topic Close this one Okay. Next is uh, suit bundler. So we have uh, dashboards. Oh, after suit bundlers, we have dashboards, KPIs. Okay, cool. So uh, you might, if, if I guess some some of you might have already uh, started your marketing or uh, preparing your resume. And uh, as far as I've, I've seen, uh, most of your resumes, uh, most of the resumes that uh, uh, we uh, create. Uh, uh, obviously you guys know it's not we don't put always the real experience so since it's not real experience we put up something else something okay we make up something so what i've seen is in each and every project everyone writes kpis dashboards but let me tell you frankly i've been working on netsuite since five years okay and i've hardly got an opportunity to create dashboards or kpis most of the clients okay if you if it's a new client small client very small okay they don't have any work to do in NetSuite, then they might ask you to create some dashboard just for fun okay just for killing time but 99.9 percent .9 you're going to get placed in a hu huge complex customization uh, environment like huge companies those have like a lot of customizations a lot of work they're doing a lot of things with NetSuite. okay NetSuite is their erp they might be having like 50 other applications and they might be doing integrations data from here to there, NetSuite to there, from there to NetSuite. Okay. And trust me, 99% of the time, they don't care about dashboards. Nobody cares about dashboards. Okay. And let me tell you what are dashboards. Okay. You come here, dashboards. Dashboards, okay. You can see here, this calendar, leave that. Your key, okay. KPI or dashboard is the same. Uh, key performance indicators. Okay. You'll see, okay. The, you have this, okay. Uh, current period uh, we had 200 orders 210 orders 10 orders okay who who wants to know this because you're you're working in a xyz okay honeycomb honeycomb is to, uh, sales orders right orders to ship okay let's see orders to ship sales orders okay sales orders uh, honeycomb is working has global uh, okay it's working glo on a global basis so you say ship or shipping uh, uh, sales orders in north america there are like they might be uh, out of 200 there might be 100 north american sales orders okay in uh, Europe, there might be like 40, 50 sales orders. In Australia, there might be 40, 50. But who wants to see the complete orders in NetSuite? 
and Australia guy doesn't care how many sales orders are created in US. US guy doesn't care how many sales orders are created in Europe. So see this orders to ship, and also US sales orders are shipped from US. Europe sales orders are shipped from Europe, and sometimes there are multiple locations. So this doesn't make sense. Who wants to see this orders to ship? How many current orders are there? So that's why. And if at all, if at all, this this call in analytics, right? Okay, how many? What is the business we've done? Okay, how much revenue we got? Uh, that those all comes under analytics, okay, based upon the company's performance in previous years. You need to plan for future, okay, and the budgeting, okay, uh, how much we need to spend on resources and all that. That's all analytics. And any in present day, any company, any even medium medium sized company for analytics, they have analytical tools. You might have heard uh, some name of some tools like uh, analytics, um, like uh, Cognos, Host Analytics. Or burst, or wave analytics, or even uh, Tableau, or there there are like many the quick click view. There are a lot of uh, applications. Some of your friends might be even working on those. You might ask, hey, what is, what does your application do? They'll say it's analytics. It does all reporting. So that is analytics. That is reporting. Okay, that's where they do all this. In NetSuite, nobody does this. Okay, nobody wants to look into NetSuite. Okay, give, what give me what what are all orders to ship it doesn't make sense if you if you're working in US why do you, this order to ship might contain even orders that are created in uh, Australia and APAC and EMEA APAC is Asia Pacific and EMEA is Europe and all that okay so this doesn't make sense so it, if you are very 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 lucky or unlucky I don't know how to define that you might be asked to create a KPI or dashboard so that's why whenever I see a resume where we guys mention KPIs and dashboards in each and every project I get a little laugh, like okay, <laughs> this doesn't happen. <laughs> Mostly, you won't be working on. I guess, uh, yeah, you. Some of you guys who are hearing right now, they might, they might uh, feel I'm targeting you guys. No, it's not like it's not a negative thing. I'm just saying, in general, this is what happens. KPIs and dashboards are not used. What are KPIs and dashboards? It's analytics. For analytics, every company has its own applications. So it's very rare that you'll be asked to create a KPI or dashboard. So okay, even that. Let's let's get to know how do we, how do we create that? Okay, if we okay even over here even on this home page. Okay, there are two things. One is the KPI dashboard. Second is a portlet. Okay, uh, and portlet is different thing. I'll let you know what is a portlet. Okay, uh, KPIs or dashboards. What are they? It's like this. Something you you want some you pull out some uh, results some data. So how do you pull out this data? Simple. Uh, in all the things we've seen, where can we pull out data? Save such as right. This where whatever criteria you get, give and what all results you want to see, you pull out the data. So it's simple. Same thing. Save such as you create a save search and pull that save search onto this uh, KPI. Uh, where is that? Portlet uh, personalize. Okay. This here, right? Yeah. KPIs. So you have KPI metering, KPI. It's a, it's even different type within that. So if you create something KPI metering, uh, so here okay, unit orders to ship. So, if you do setup, is it setup? Yeah, see, it's like a save search. You click, you give, a, you give something, you give some data, and then you get it. So this is KPI meter. You guys, if you want, you can just practice it. Uh, let's see what is KPI scorecard. Okay. So you click on each and every plus, and it comes onto the dashboard. Then you go here, you do setup. You have remove option over there itself. So yeah, you can see you have options board metrics. You want to see restrict all only for my team. You want to see these KPIs, and yeah, board metrics might be a, a save search or it might be a report that we are pulling into this dashboard, and then you'll see the data. See, and some there are some standard uh, searches like board metrics is a standard search for sure. So it's like that. Uh, you can see there's a quick search. You can do quick search. Within your dashboard, someone might ask, "Hey, want to do quick search on uh, vendors or something?" You can you can provide them this quick search. What else we have? Uh, then we have portlets. Okay, we can add calendars. This is already there. So KPIs lists. Okay, so it's like that. You always add it. You do setup. You want to remove. You have remove option. When you set up, you give all your options. You can get it from a save search. Most of the times, you will be getting it from a search. What is this test search? I guess some one of us has done this. Let's see. Set up. So let's see, this is a search. Oh, this is a portlet. Sorry, it's not a search. But but still, uh, you can click. Uh, you can select a search here. 
so these are all our save searches within this honeycomb instance so you click at any uh, you click any save search and then you want how many you want to see 10 results drill down okay you can however you want you can uh, do the setting and then save it and then the results will be shown up here you create any save search you click the create this one kpi and select uh, do setup select that save search you get all the results here but it doesn't make sense if you have like 100 results here <laughs> you, you want to limit it okay give me only first 10 results and that's how you create all this uh, kpis or dashboards as key names okay then let me tell you what's a portlet so kpi and dashboards are just simple you drag drop you just select any save search and the results will be shown up but portlet it's not just a small simple thing portlet is like you have you provide a web page over here like you provide a form in a small like this this is a form but this is a standard form okay something like this you have a box like this you will have like uh, fields and let me tell you how you will get create that portlets are created from scripts i guess you can even create from here but most of the times portlets are created from scripts see custom information defined using portlet suite scripts that's what you see here right so nobody comes here and clicks a custom portlet so how it works is uh, portlets are created from scripts what is the functionality uh, we create a portlet script to create something like this okay over here on the dashboard we create fields we put values in the field like data type uh, there might be a say like transaction invoice or say sales order or we might create any field okay uh, from a portlet script we can create this box we can get any fields we can put whatever values we want okay and then on the button okay we'll say the save button or submit button we will give it from the portlet script and then within the portlet script what we say at the end okay when this save button is clicked or submit button is clicked call this utlet or call this schedule script or call this user event script okay and what most of times it's utlet okay and uh, what happens then uh, you click on submit this portlet script and then it's saying okay if someone clicks the submit you call this utlet and the suitlet is called what's present in the suitlet all the logic behind this submit button so when you click submit button what should the suitlet do okay what it does it looks at all these fields it takes all the values that you enter and based upon that values it performs some business logic whatever you want okay and when we get into developer part i will uh, explain this uh, a little more in detail okay uh, so this is about kpis dashboards and portlets okay and it's mostly you guys need to just test it out uh, if you want okay i'll let you know now uh, where you can get more help apart from me uh, so you need to practice uh, i guess all of you guys have got uh, your credentials by now so just keep practicing and yeah i forgot to give you a assignment so yeah I, this is a long weekend ahead so three days i'll be just sitting at home so i have a lot of time to create an assignment for you guys so yeah i expect your assignment uh, to get your assignment uh, by end of this weekend so with this we complete uh, dashboards and kpis so we have completed all our admin tasks now don't worry if you don't remember anything you forgot anything or you don't and you didn't understand anything okay uh, we'll do one thing uh, our next class will be on tuesday so let's not get into developing uh, on tuesday itself okay on tuesday uh, even if you guys any of you guys have missed any of the classes okay i'll give you the recordings but that's a different thing but if you want to know some, again something at least a few lines at least a few information about each one of this let's have that on tuesday let's do a, a quick review of admin tasks on tuesday okay tuesday let's have one hour if required we can just go at 10 15 minutes uh, extra uh, let's once again review all this so that if you guys didn't understand anything it will be an opportunity another opportunity for you guys to understand okay and then i'll give you recordings you can understand from that okay and if i am not available okay for some reason I'm, i i die today or die tomorrow okay if i am not available then how would you get help forget me forget uh, this company uh, through which you're getting this training forget everything okay you, you're just sitting in a, on a client location you have some issue okay you're building a script or you uh, you need some help and there's no person to ask help for okay or uh, there might be a scenario where you can't even make a call okay phone is restricted emails are restricted okay your personal emails are restricted you can't do a personal chat you can't get hold of any person okay you are stuck in such an environment okay then you need help how will you get help okay we have two things here 
one is called NetSuite support and the other is called help suite address okay the first thing I want to tell in this is help okay and where is this help it's over here within your NetSuite over here you can see help click on help that's everything about NetSuite see account administration NetSuite basics everything order management everything employee management okay and uh, talking about okay let's talk about um, roles right okay how do I do an update to role okay there is roles everything everything about roles okay this is basic information about role again let's go back to role the role setup click on role setup oh, sorry. and you get account setup you see issue roles okay you'll in activating roles you'll get you'll get some you can just uh, investigate just uh, research uh, whatever topics are here just open each and every page you'll get what you want to know and even about scripting mm, let's say suite script scriptable records see we have everything apis even you want okay uh, and develop a developer part and mostly we'll be doing whenever we are scripting something we are using apis okay it's like you use basic javascript and on top of that uh, you'll be using netsuite apis uh, to provide any logic to your script so apis you want to know okay how, how, do I, how would i set a field using a script field right okay field apis just check field api see we have field apis sublist apis search apis okay record apis so these are different kinds of apis you click on that you get a list of all apis see all these apis these are the only apis present on field apis for fields you click on any one you get information about it okay it's defined all the parameters okay and sometimes you even have some examples if you're lucky enough see there's an example okay there are three examples for this one so it's like that so this is help uh, anything you want to know you have an issue you, uh, you get a requirement and you don't know what it's exactly then you just get into this and see there's inventory management uh, when you are um, your marketing is going on and there is some uh, requirement which to which your resume has been uh, sent and that in the job description you might see inventory management they need someone who can work on inventory management then you should not be like oh this guy Sam he just told us about auto cash and procure to pay them what now what is this inventory management don't worry about that you just come to help click on inventory management get to know about it it's not that every client that's using NetSuite they use inventory management it's like out of 10 one or two clients might use inventory management but 10 out of 10 they certainly they'll use all to cash and or to pay all to cash is certain let's wait is erp erp is enterprise resource planning the main thing is revenue the main transactions that is all to cash certainly 9 out of 10 clients they will use all to cash so along with all to cash someone might be using inventory management and you see that in job description then come to help uh, get into inventory management see there are a lot of lot of information about it so you can go to each and every based upon how much time you have how much interest you have in it how much you want to know about it um, just do some research and you'll get to know about it uh, it's only inventory management don't worry about others order management it's not something it's not a module okay it's just it's within order to cash process order management uh, the people then there might be even a role called order management uh, that team will be taking up sales order or shipping okay and that's it for Outlook, don't worry about it. Every company has, has its own IT, they'll take care of the Outlook. And then, yeah, Suite Flow, Suite Commerce, Suite Cloud. Uh, yeah, inside Suite Cloud. See, you have Suite Script 1.0, you get to know about everything. Even there's Suite Script 2.0. Trust me, even I don't know Suite Script 2.0. NetSuite introduced it last year. It's a completely different way of scripting. Uh, currently, um, outsiders, they don't know how to script 2.0. So, NetSuite is providing a training. And it will be like three, four years. Uh, it will take three, four years for uh, most of the clients, most of the people who's, who are uh, scripting on NetSuite to get down to 2.0. Until then, you can just uh, do scripting on 1.0. And if you have time and you want to learn 2.0, you can just come in to help. Click on 2.0, click on source script to 2.0 APIs, and you can learn. And you can see, you can get at least a bit of information from this area how, how the 2.0 scripting is done. And then you have this, all this. So, suit script okay suit cloud id and there's one more thing uh, eclipse id let's see if it's there downloading eclipse good so 
since Tuesday we are going to look at uh, uh, reviewing all the admin tasks again. On Wednesday class, uh, we'll be working on this. Before getting to the development part, uh, every one of us needs to have this Eclipse uh, in this. Uh, it's not like you're going to certainly use Eclipse in your project. Just a second. Amen. Okay, okay. So, uh, if you take my example, I've never used Eclipse. I've always used Notepad++ for scripting. But uh, you may be in a situation where your uh, manager might say, hey, don't use Notepad++, use Eclipse. Uh, we want you to work only on Eclipse. So that's why you need to know. You need to uh, know how to download Eclipse and how you work in Eclipse. Okay. So we'll have that session on Wednesday. Everybody of us, let's download Eclipse. Even I don't have Eclipse currently in my system. So let's download everyone together and see how it works. But uh, when we see, uh, when we practice in uh, the developing developers part, uh, let's just practice in Notepad++. That's easy to install. So you better get that Note Notepad++ installed in your system, and we'll uh, all to all of us together. Let's uh, we'll download this Eclipse on Wednesday. So this is all you have in help. Okay. Now let's look at other part. Other than help, what do we have? The two more things. So other help, okay, we have NetSuite support and we have Suite Answers. Uh, first, let's look at Suite Answers, then let's go to NetSuite support, okay? So what are Suite Answers? Okay, you've seen help. Along with help, there is one more thing called Suite Answers. Let's go to support. And there are Suite Answers. Suite Answers contains everything that is then help and bit more. Uh, so what is a bit more? When someone asks a question uh, and someone else answers it, that whole con conversation also present here. So you can see, you can just uh, do some research on the suite answers. Uh, anything you want, again, see, you type field APIs and see what happens. The field API. And you get see same thing. This is the same page that you've seen in help. Everything will be same, see? Same thing. So, which means all the data that is in help is present in suite answers. The only thing is, if you want to look at any API information, it's faster if you can go to that help. For this, you need to come to support tab, click on that suit answers button, this page to open up, and then you start type it. Uh, so it's two, three steps more than help. But if you have any question, you can type in your question over here and see if there are any topics, any articles related to that. Search tips. So you have any search tips. You can just ex explore this. So there's some tutorials, suit answers tutorials. You can play the video 17 minutes. You can see the video, what's there in that. And see, even there's support option from here, but nobody goes to contact support from here. Okay. Uh, it's this is not the place you contact. The thing is, yeah, you can contact here uh, support from this, but it's better you always contact from your production. Any client, uh, this is just training. That's why you can see this maybe. But uh, when you get on a real project, uh, if you want to contact NetSuite support, that's the next topic, okay? If you look here, the next topic is NetSuite support, our last topic. So whenever there is something that's not working in NetSuite, okay, there is some issue which you are able to unable to identify, okay? Why is this behaving like this? Uh, I wrote my script, why is not my script not working? Why is one particular API of my script not working? So you might come across all these scenarios, all these situations. In that case, okay, you're not getting help. You, okay, you'll come on to help, you come on to suit answers, but still you're not getting help. Then what do you do? Your lot last resort, contact NetSuite support. So how do you contact NetSuite support? From your instance, on the support, you have this. See, here currently it says not enough permissions, but even for contacting support, you need production. So whenever, if your client doesn't give you production access, you can even say this point, hey, if we have an issue, if we need to contact support, I can't contact them from Sandbox. I have to contact them from production. So that's why you need to give me. And and uh, in read-only permission, I guess you can contact support from read-only permission. So don't worry about that. There is no such thing that you can see only support cases, but you can't create support cases. So even read-only uh, administrator role, you can still contact support. And this is the place. You come to support tab. Uh, you'll have your NetSuite account center over here. You click on the and then uh, NetSuite support page opens. There you, there are options. You have options. You can just, uh, you'll easily figure it out. Uh, ask a question, submit a case, 
Uh, you type in all your details okay this what is your name first name last name okay which area you is your issue with sales order processing or to cash and you will give the high net suite support you give a description hey i'm uh, you know what honeycomb at or honeycomb uh, this sales order is behaving weirdly this is what's happening uh, please investigate and let us know you can contact mm -hmm. me this my information and you can provide your details and uh, you can provide your number you can provide even a uh rating to that uh, case if it's high priority you can say p1 if it's low priority you can say p4 so it's, it's based upon the uh, how critical it is you can select the rating and you can submit the case and then you have your email id to on that so next would support contacts you through your email id first you'll get an email saying hey we received your uh, case uh, someone from the support team will get back to you and then when someone gets assigned with your case they'll get in touch with you and discuss with you most of the times they do web session and they want to see what's happening and even net should support they always have a replica of your account of your production account with them so they can even test at their side their end so if you're too busy you can say hey you guys have you will have a replica of our account right just test it in that just investigate in that and see if you can replicate the issue and you can say if possible please solve it so that's how uh, you contact with net should support so that is done in net should support so these three things are for help this help is just on the instance of the top. You get to know everything about its documentation. You can say help is a documentation, okay? And then you have suite answers, which is nothing but help plus a little bit extra. Like you have training videos, you have tutorials there. You can see some articles where people, someone asks a question and then other people who answer those questions, okay? And then there is NetSuite support, uh, which is nothing but you contact direct NetSuite support itself. And even that based upon, uh, depends upon your subscription and how your uh, client subscription is with NetSuite support. Most of the time it should be free, 99.9% .9 it should be free contacting support and, and if, if you're too unlucky in rare cases where your company is too stingy, they may have a subscription where they may say, okay, we don't need any support from NetSuite and that's where you'll face issues. And I hope you won't get into such client. There, there wouldn't be many of the such clients. There might be hardly a good number them. So that's when it, okay. There's one more thing left out, uh, which is NetSuite user group. So uh, NetSuite user group is separate on like you have Facebook, like if you have Twitter. There's a NetSuite user group. Go to Google. And you have, you can click on NetSuite user group. It's similar to like your Facebook or your LinkedIn or something. Okay. Uh, but in order to get into NetSuite user group, uh, you need to be working in any client location because you need to provide your, I don't think you can create an account using your dot at gmail.com because that, that was the case like uh, four years back. I don't know how the case is now. Uh, so you need to create, when you get onto a job, uh, always you can try now try using try signing up using your at gmail.com but few years back it was like uh, like at honeycomb.com that's how it should be if you have such email such a client email and that client should have next too so only then okay you'll get an email uh, activation link back to your company email and then you click on the activation link it gets activated then you can get, log into NetSuite user group and you can see this is like any person from anywhere in the world, like if there was how they log into their Facebook account, they can just log in into their NetSuite uh, user group account and they can see everything. Like anybody anywhere in the world on this earth uh, asking a question on NetSuite and there will be thousands of people replying on it, responding on it. You can see everything, okay? You can see every damn thing on, on this. So just check out uh, if you can uh, log in using your gmail.com. You'll get more information from here too. Whenever you have time, just get into this user group and interact with other NetSuite users. It's not even required that you interact with them. Just look what's going on. Something you can you can add to your knowledge base. You can. That's that's what initial uh, few years of uh, working on NetSuite. It's there's no point where you'll say I know everything about NetSuite. Nobody can know everything about anything at any point of time. See, it's always a learning curve, and also. There might be a situation when in a project you might say, okay, this is not possible in NetSuite. 
and your manager or someone can prove you that okay this is possible see the, those situations will certainly arise and you should have all always have a positive internet okay life is always learning every day you learn something so you should tell them oh i didn't know about it that's great i learned something new today thanks to you guys that should be the attitude they'll feel okay good that's a he has a good attitude so even though he doesn't know this and we proved him wrong that this is next week can do this uh, he's taking it positively he th- he's thanking us that we got to know something new in next week so that's how it should be even when you guys take vendor calls or client calls interviews never say i know everything about next week be humble always say that see uh, i can never know everything about next week i hardly know 50 60% of about next week and i'm eager to learn more every day it's a learning curve i want to learn something new every day if if your project provides me that opportunity to learn something every new every day uh, it will be great for me great for my career that's how i want to be that's my attitude so don't say that's my attitude just show it show them that that's your attitude okay so that's how you talk uh, and that should be your goal like every first few years certainly every day you'll be learning something and that in that uh, time frame when you have time just come to this user group let me tell you i've been working since 5 years only in the first 6 months or 1 year i used to get into this user group and see these posts and if you even if you look at this long time you might get scared oh there's a lot of thing in next week i don't know anything about it i'm just a beginner i may not know all these things never i may never know so it, it might scare you up don't worry uh, it's it's part of the game so it happens with everybody we will never know everything about anything now it's like yes okay you're working on netsuite you wouldn't know everything about netsuite whatever little you know you work on it and you get to know new things and you work on the new things that's how you add up your knowledge on netsuite that's it and whatever you know whatever you go you get paid for that and that's life okay i'm getting into too much of uh, lecturing so let's wind up the session and uh, so tuesday uh, uh, we'll once again do a quick review of all the admin tasks and uh, before tuesday you'll be getting your uh, mostly maybe on tuesday or on monday you'll be getting your first assignment and all this yeah it's a good thing if you get assignment and if you start in work if you start working on it and somewhere you start you don't understand how to get it done then it's a good opportunity for you to attend that review session on tuesday it will clear your doubts and also as always i said uh, it's not required that okay you have to ask me a question in the session since we've been allotted only few days few weeks or few hours to finish our training uh, i'm not opening up the question and answer session but still uh, there's no restriction that you can't contact me you have my email id that i that one the one i send you every day uh, for the go to meeting information just send an email to that any doubt any question you have uh, if i'm available if i have some free time i'll call you one on one i'll just call you and i can send i can do a go to meeting just with uh, you as individual and i can explain you i can clear your doubts so uh, even if i'm not available if you are too shy to contact me you have your friends you have all these people who are attending this session and some some might be your roommates or your friends you can even contact them you can it's good if you are discussing it's like you know about group studies right combined studies similar to that just discuss you get to know clear get clear, get your doubts clear if all of you have doubts then contact me then i'm here to help okay guys so have a good weekend of 3 days and we'll touch base again on tuesday uh, with a review of again all the admin tasks and next week we'll be starting our developers and on developer part even that we won't be going much detail uh, we'll be uh, going uh, like on the basics basic things in developers part that's what we'll be doing okay everybody uh, thanks for the time yeah and i see you guys on tuesday yeah thanks, yeah, thanks. Have, have a good night, night. yeah bye